Hi, I'm Penny Zacco, and let me introduce you to the R3 Arga in beautiful blush colour here. This is one of the new additions to the Arga family, and the model I've got here is the twin zone one. An Arga is an important addition to anybody's home, and the reason why people love Argas so much is the fact that they are so easy to cook on, but also the food that you produce on the Arga is actually much healthier than food cooked on other models. The Arga cooker cooks with a radiant heat and that maintains the moisture and the goodness of the food that you prepare. It not only is healthier, it's easier, it's stress-free cooking. The R3 model comes actually with four doors, but this is a very clever cooker. Although it's only 100 in length, it actually has six different oven functions. The top oven here can either be a roasting oven or a baking oven. And the oven below can be a baking oven or a simmering oven. Over here, we have a new, very exciting addition to the Arga family. And if I open up the door now, you will see that we now have the inclusion of a grill. The lower oven down here is a warming oven, which will keep your food warm for up to two hours without spoiling. I absolutely love this cooker. This side of the Arga is designed to be left on should you wish it to be. And the heat that comes from the ovens will gently radiate into the room. So if you're working from home or you've got a drafty home, this is the perfect solution, not only for fantastic cooking, but also for that 24 seven radiant heat. The top here is a boiling plate. So it's perfect for popping on the kettle or for doing some toast. It's great for sealing meat and it's fantastic to start dishes on top of there and then place into one of the ovens. The R3 is easy to install as well as maintain. It comes with its own plinth and there's no flue required. Servicing, you don't need to do that. It's an all electric Arga. If you want to moderate the amount of heat that comes from the Arga, you also have a low energy setting, which is E. On E, the top oven here will be cooking at baking oven temperatures. That's between 190 and 160 degrees. And this is a cast iron oven. The lower oven has steel double walls, which means you get radiant heat even from the steel oven. And when it's on E, that oven becomes a slow oven or a simmering oven. The top plate here is a boiling plate and that's solid cast iron as well. And you can leave this side of the Argar on and that's where your radiant heat will come from. So on E, a little bit less heat than if it's actually on full. When it's on full, the top oven becomes a roasting oven. That's cooking between 240 and 220 degrees. The lower oven down here then becomes a baking oven. So you can decide what you want to cook and either have it on E or have it on full. And depending on the time of year and how much heat you want into your room, you can moderate that as well. With the heat up time between E and full just being one hour, it's very flexible. If the ovens are completely off and you want to bring them up to full cooking temperature, you only have to wait between an hour and a half and two hours for that to happen. So this cooker is incredibly flexible and very, very versatile, and it will do what you want it to do. Over on this side of the cooker, we have a second hot plate on this model, and this is a simmering plate. However, if you don't want the simmering plate, you can have induction there as well. So if you want things to happen immediately, induction will give you that. This simmering plate will take 20 minutes to heat up. The induction, as I say, is instant. And it has a two pot zone with a bridge, so you can put a large pan on top of there, should you wish. On this side, this top oven 
is a grill with the latest infrared technology. It has three different settings, so you can grill on high, medium, and low. This heats up in just around about two to three minutes, incredibly quick. The lower oven down here is a warming oven, and all you need to do is press this button here, and it will take just one hour to heat up. That's your hot cupboard, warming oven, perfect for keeping your food warm for up to two hours. So you can cook your meals and transfer them across to here, should you wish. The R3 is on E setting at the moment, and as I've mentioned, that is a lower temperature inside the oven. So we have a baking oven here, and down here we have a simmering or a slow oven. On the baking function, on the top oven, you can see inside the oven here, I have some fish cooking and a fruit cake. And what's fantastic about the Argo ovens is you don't get any transfers of flavours coming across. So actually you can be cooking something sweet and savoury, something strong tasting, something delicate, all in the same oven at the same time. Fish cooks absolutely wonderfully just on the base there with that direct radiant heat coming up. And you'll notice I've left the door open but my fruit cake won't sink. Unlike conventional cookers, when you open up the door of the Arga ovens, there's no rush of hot air escaping replaced by cold air. The heat actually comes from the radiant heat in both this top oven and the lower oven as well. The cast iron oven is perfect for cooking something like a fruit cake. It maintains the moisture inside there and allows you to have prolonged cooking. My fruit cake inside here has been in there for around about an hour and a half. So let's have a take a little look and see how that's cooked. Oh, absolutely beautiful. This is made with dark brown sugar and known as Mrs. Gunn's school cake. I used to have this as a little girl. In fact, cooking on this Arga cooker brings back lots of lovely memories for me. Underneath here, I have my fish. Get my handle for my pan and you can see that that salmon has cooked absolutely beautifully as well. No added fat on that either, it's just the gentle radiant heat has cooked that through and that's only taken around about 10 minutes to cook. So you can see the top oven on baking on that E setting could actually cook a lot of dishes all at the same time. The joy is as well that the lower oven is also on. And if I open up the door now down here, you can see that I've got a number of dishes stacked inside there, just sitting on a floor grid. And it's a really good idea to get yourself some stackable pans to really take advantage of that capacity of the ovens. The ovens will actually hold up to six pans at the same time. Let's have a little look what we've got inside there. So first of all, we have the potatoes that we brought to the boil earlier on, on the boiling plate, drained the water off, left a little small amount in there, and you can see now they've cooked absolutely beautifully. Beneath it, down here, in my larger pan, take the lid off. Oh, it smells absolutely beautiful. And we have here my beef ragu. Really nice and juicy. And when you cook inside the Arga ovens, just be mindful, you don't need to add as much liquid. Things don't dry out in there. Because the ovens have huge capacity, it does mean that you can cook your main meal with your dessert as well. And if we have a little look down here, you can see I've got a gorgeous rice pudding cooking there. And it's just beginning to form a really nice skin on there, just the way I like it. So the R3 on E, the top oven is a baking oven and the lower oven is a simmering oven or a slow oven. To turn the grill on, you just use this dial here and there's a little icon on the top. You then open up the door and you can hear the fan kicking in and the infrared grill will start to heat up and it'll come up to a cooking temperature between two and three minutes. Cleverly, Arga have actually enamelled inside this oven for ease of cleaning. And I love this grill because what you'll see in a moment when I pop this bacon in is you don't get the spitting and the nasty smoky smells that you might get with other type of cookers. So here we have the large grill pan. 
some lovely bacon. And to grill your bacon, I'm going to pop it onto the top set of runners, so high underneath that grill. You've got three different settings inside the grill. You've got your high, your medium and your low. What I'm going to show you now is actually the positionings inside the um, grill. And I have here, first of all, a pasta bake with some grated cheese on. So to grill bacon right at the top, to do a pasta bake, I'm going to go into the oven and I'm going to place this just on the second set like so. Now because I'm using the half size cookware that you can purchase from Arga, it does mean that I can take advantage of the different positionings within the oven and you can actually have two different uh, positionings. You can then place a rice pudding, as you can see here, with some lovely slithered almonds onto the third set. Now we have the pasta bake on the medium grill and the rice pudding that was cooked earlier in the simmering oven on the low setting. If you want a little bit of extra browning, you literally just move the positioning of the food that you're cooking. So my rice pudding can move from the low setting up to the high setting, like so. Something like a creme brulee that you can pick up at your local supermarket is perfect to pop under the grill should you have that sweet tooth. So after 10 minutes, the creme brulees are now done on the high setting. And all they need now is just to sit for a couple of minutes for that brown sugar topping to harden. And then you've got your creme brulee to enjoy. Both the grill and the lower oven, the warming oven on this side operate independently. And you turn the warming oven on just by this little pushing button here and it'll take about an hour to heat up. It's absolutely perfect for cooking food and keeping warm for up to two hours. I've already got in here some lentils that I cooked earlier and I'll show you now how this lower oven doesn't dry your food out. Absolutely beautiful lentils here. Smells absolutely divine. The lower oven as well is fantastic for dehydrating foods and herbs is a great thing to start off with. So if I just pull out from the top of the oven just down here, you can see that I've been dehydrating some basil and some mint. The warming oven is fantastic for busy households. You've got people coming in at different times, especially for the evening meal. It's really convenient to have a warming oven down there where you can pop a meal in for somebody that's maybe coming in an hour or two later. It's also fantastic if you're doing large meals for a large amount of people. You could have cooked it all, have it sitting inside that warming oven. I call it my hostess oven. I cooked the salmon and the lentils over an hour ago and the rice pudding. I popped them into the warming oven. So let's see if they're ready for me to enjoy my dinner. Down here then. Absolutely beautiful. And not to miss out on that sweet tooth, just below it, I have my rice pudding and my little parma biscuits. Yum. Not only is the warming oven fantastic for dehydrating foods such as herbs or tomatoes or fruit, as well as keeping food warm, which you've cooked a couple of hours before, it's also excellent for heating through convenience foods. And here I have a carton of custard that you just need to open. And if you place it inside the oven down here, onto the bottom, also things like canned foods, again, just make sure you open them. We've got some baked beans here. Place those down there and shut the door on it. I need about an hour, an hour and a half to heat through. When the warming oven's turned off, it's a fantastic place to store your cookware as well if you wanted to. It's got a huge capacity in there, so all your trays and your roasting tins can be stored down there if you should wish. From the E setting, which is a lower running cost setting, as well as lower temperature inside the ovens and the radiant heat that comes from it, we have the full setting as well. And to go from E to full, you just need to wait an hour. And all you need to do is just to turn the dial to full, and then you end up having a roasting oven up here, but a baking oven down there. It really is an incredibly flexible cooker 
and remember that this side of the arger is designed to be left on as well so you don't need any additional heat in your kitchen when you have the R3. With the R3 you have a choice what you want actually on the top. This side over here is a simmer plate so it gets up to around about 265 degrees and it's perfect for simmering. If you don't want that, you can actually have an induction with a two pot zone with a bridge. Um, so it gives you immediate heat if that's something that you want. This will take around about 20 minutes to come to temperature. On this side, you have the boiling plate. They both work independently and operational via this little dial here. Now this one here will take up to an hour to heat up, but the concept is actually you can leave that on if you want to throughout the day. And you can just keep on popping the kettle on there or bringing things up to boil. And also that's gonna to add to the radiant heat that comes from the cooker. Around the edge on this model, you've got lovely high polished enamel. And it's lovely for resting things on. So you can buy little cork mats and sit them on there and keep food warm on there if you haven't actually turned on this side of the arger. What I like to do with the enamel is a number of things. I've got some lovely mustard seeds and some fennel seeds here, and I really like to just pop those on the enamel. And what happens is they just heat through. And if you want to do spice combinations or maybe oil infusions, things like that, then the top of the arger is a real usable space. Equally, it's great for melting butter, for instance, or chocolate. So you, again, you just pop that on the enamel there and it will melt. You don't need to use a microwave. And then a lemon as well, makes it easier to squeeze, lemons and limes. You can also pop that on the enamel like so. When you have an arger, you actually then don't need a lot of other appliances. Things like an electric kettle, a toaster, a microwave, all those things can go and you can just use your Arga for it. So an Arga that's on 24 seven, such as the R3, is a fantastic choice if that's something that appeals to you. Over here, as I say, is the simmering plate. And if lift the lid up on there, you see a really nice wide circumference of cast iron as it is on the boiling plate as well. And as I said, you can turn these on independently, not have them on at all if you don't want to. Now, this simmering plate over here is also fantastic as a griddle. And if you take a piece of Baco Glide, we've already seen the egg and the toast done on there, but now what I want to show you is something else, and that is the ultimate toasted sandwich. This is my BLT, wow. So what you need to do is you place it on top of the Baco Glide, and then we need to pop another piece of Baco Glide on the top. The toasted sandwich will only take a few minutes either side and the butter just gives it a really nice richness. You don't have to use butter if you don't want to. You can have a healthier version of this. So what you need to do then is lift the lid up, take this off, and then we're just going to turn the sandwich over. How easy is that? When the R3 is on full heat, you get the full extent of radiant heat coming into your home. And also the top oven then becomes a roasting oven and the lower oven becomes the baking oven. And I've got a few things in here just to show you. So when we cook inside the ovens, it's about positioning. So if you put something at the top of the ovens, you'll get direct radiant heat coming down and it's perfect for grilling in both of the ovens. On the floor of the oven, it's great for griddling vegetables or in the case of the baking oven down here, just cooking some pastry. Let's have a look what we've got in the middle of the roasting oven, which is perfect for roasting. And we have those really lovely potatoes and peppers. Really nice combination. And the great thing about cooking in this way, both griddling and roasting vegetables, is you don't need to use a lot of fat. Um, because you're cooking with radiant heat, you actually maintain the moisture of the food and the goodness as well. So it's only a drizzle of oil, that's all that's required. The baking oven down here, as it is on full power mode, a simmering oven when it's on E, has a doubled walled made out of steel. And it's fantastic because that also gives you radiant heat as well. And it's great for finishing off my flan here because I've got some really nice asparagus. And I don't want those to dry out. So now I'm going to pop that in the middle of the oven. 
In about 15-20 minutes that will be ready and you'll be able to see that your asparagus stays lovely and green and the pastry is going to be really nice and crisp. There may be times when you don't want the radiant heat from this cooker and you might have all the ovens off. The top of the cooker is extremely useful. So rather than griddling my vegetables on the floor of the oven, I've actually got them cooking on the boiling plate here in the griddle pan. And to the side, I've actually got a wrap that is just heating through with my melted garlic butter. And what I like to do as a quick meal is to brush the wrap with some melted butter, not much, and then take my vegetables from the griddle and pop those on the top. There we go. And that is your vegetable wrap, done on the top of the arga. So the only thing now on on the R3 is the simmering plate with a piece of bacon glide on. And I've got some really nice marinated chicken escallops here. And I'm going to do some really fabulous chicken burgers. So we're going to cook the chicken through. Normally takes around about four minutes either side. And then we can also toast our brioche buns on the top as well. So every single part of this R3 is a usable space. And it's up to you what combination you have on, whether you want the 24-7 radiant heat or whether you just want to use the top of the arga, the warming oven, the grill, the roasting oven, or the baking oven. The top of the arga, a very usable space. The boiling plate being a hot griddle, and the simmering plate over here being a more gentler one, you could call this the arga queue, the barbecue for all weathers. I'm gonna pop some bread now on the top, and that will just lightly toast. going to be cooking a meal today on the R3. So to do this meal I've got the boiling plate on, I've got the simmering plate on and we've turned the grill on too. So I'm going to cook for you some lovely spicy Barnsley lamb chops. I'm going to do a gorgeous potato sautéed with spinach and some mustard seeds and I'm going to serve that with some lovely steamed green beans and then to finish off if you've got room, I'm going to do some lovely cardamom butter baked bananas under the grill. Let's start off with the potato dish. So onto the simmering plate and I'm going to pop on there the saute pan. And I've had my mustard seeds here just warming, give them a head start. So I'm going to pop them into the pan like so. Wonderful. Nice little bit of heat in there. I've also got some cumin seeds as well, so I'm gonna pop those in there, not all of them. And I'm gonna pop a little bit of my homemade chili and garlic oil. Let's just give that a little mix round. I'm doing it on the simmering plate because I want a nice, gentle heat. I don't want it too hot. Now, earlier on, I cooked some lovely new potatoes. I steamed these. They were done in the simmering oven. So you bring them to the boil, on the boiling plate, first of all, covered with cold water. Once they've been boiling, drain them off, leave a little bit in the bottom, and pop it in the lower oven on here, on the E setting, and that's then a simmering oven. So they're good to go in there once the oil has heated up. In the meantime, I'm going to lift up the boiling plate lid, and I'm going to steam some green beans. And I like to use my sauce pot to do that. So I've got my green beans inside the jug, with some cold water. We're gonna pop that onto the boiling plate to let them cook. So they're just cooked and they're still a little bit crunchy. Now, while these are heating up, let's take advantage of that fantastic grill. This grill heats up in two to three minutes, which is fabulous. And I'm gonna pop in there my Barnsley chops. And that's now going to go on the high setting. The thing I love about the R3 is that you don't get that spitting that you get with conventional grills, which is really good. Easy clean as well because you've got the enamel coating, so if there is any splashes and spills, you just literally wipe that out. So let's go in now with these potatoes. Pop those in the pan. Now to add to that, I've got some lovely sliced red onion. Wonderful. And they're just going to take a few minutes what I like to do is to pop in a cheeky little chilli or two. 
And that gentle heat is just going to heat those chilies through. Lovely. Now to add to that as well, I've got some chopped mint. Let's check out the lamb. Oh yes, looking good, smelling great. And in my little tub here, I've got some mixed creme fraiche, turmeric and some grated ginger. And what I like to do is just pop that all over the top. The rest of those cumin seeds and then they're going to go back underneath the grill. Okay, so the onion has softened, potatoes are starting to brown. We've added those cheeky chilies and we've got the mustard seeds, remember, and the cumin seed in there as well. So now I'm going to actually add some baby spinach to it. Now this looks a lot of spinach, doesn't it? But the gentle heat of the simmering plate on the R3 will just gently wilt that down without it actually starting to brown or burn. After a few minutes, the spinach has started to wilt down, looking great. And that's actually cooked now. I'm gonna place that into my very convenient warming oven, which is just down here. Okay, the simmering plates I'm going to use again, and we're gonna use those lovely pine nuts and toast them. Let's have a little look at that lamb and see how that's getting on underneath the high grill. Oh, look at that lovely color. The beans have been cooking now for around about six, seven minutes. Lovely green beans. Look how beautifully vibrant those are. And cooking in this way on your R3 means that you have all the delicious nutrients in those green beans. Nothing's been wasted. And then to go over the top, I have these lovely toasted pine nuts. And let's check out the lamb. Oh yeah, that looks absolutely gorgeous. You can see that in the warming oven that spinach has still kept its lovely green colour. That's Penny's spicy meal for two. And while you're eating it, why not pop a dessert in the grill as well? Here I've got two bananas I've split down the middle. We pop some butter in there, some cardamom seeds that have been crushed and some brown sugar. And these are going to go on a medium grill. And whilst you're enjoying your main course, they'll be cooking away underneath the grill. Why is the Arga R3 the right cooker for you? The R3 is part of the radiant heat Argas. This means that this cooker is designed to be left on, so it will give you radiant heat as well as fantastic cooking ability. This cooker is superb for those people that want the background heat as well as the Arga cooking style. Everything on the cooker works individually. When the cooker's completely turned off, it's an hour and a half to two hours for the cooker to heat up to full heat. You have an E setting on this cooker. The E setting drops the radiant heat temperature down, making the top oven into a baking oven rather than the roasting oven that it is on full. And the lower oven down here becomes a simmering oven rather than a baking oven. Cast iron at the top, and double walled steel in the lower oven makes both ovens fantastic cookers. It makes your food taste better, it's healthier. It locks in and seals in moisture and it's fantastic for baking. The top here, you have a choice. With the R3, you can have a twin dome as I have here, with a boiling plate to this side and a simmering plate to this one here. If you prefer, you can actually have the simmering plate replaced with an induction hob. There's a two pot zone with a bridge that you can put on one large pan if you so wish. Lots of fantastic features with the induction as well, including three modes of a 40 degrees, a 70 degrees and a 94 degrees on there. This will heat up in 20 minutes from cold. The boiling plate, slightly longer, it will take 45 minutes to an hour. But remember, this side of the arga is designed to be left on, so it's always ready to have a lovely little bum hug or to pop the kettle on. 
The R3 also incorporates something brand new to Arga, which is the infrared grill. It heats up incredibly quickly, just in two to three minutes. Spitting is reduced purely because of the power of the grill. We have three different settings in there, a high, a medium and a low. And the inside of the oven is enameled for easy cleaning. In fact, all the ovens are incredibly easy to clean. The cast iron, you just literally just brush out with a wire brush as well as the top. The Arga R3 has that all classic enameled finish, very high quality. The top on this one is all enamel too and a very usable space for melting chocolate, for heating things through, for resting things on. The lower oven down here, also working independently, is turned on via this button here. That will heat up in just one hour. We've seen that it's fantastic for storing plates and dishes. It's great for reheating processed foods such as a carton of custard or a tin of baked beans. It's wonderful for keeping food warm for up to two hours. So if you live in a busy household and you've got people coming in at various times, that evening meal doesn't need to be a chore. You literally cook and you pop into your warming oven down there. The R3 for me is a fantastic example of Arga engineering, something that I'm very, very proud to be part of. The R3 24-7 radiant heat, always ready to cook on whenever you want it, be it one hot plate, be it one oven, be it just the grill. The R3 is the cooker for you. If you want to see this cooker a little bit more in action, then contact your local store. See a live demonstration on the Arga cooker. Happy Arga hunting, because the biggest decision you'll have is actually the colour that you choose.